Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make the Westminster pouch. The Westminster pouch is a box pouch that features a pretty lace zipper. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, well before we begin you'll need to print out the PDF pattern and you always want to open the file using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. The last page of the PDF pattern file is the pattern piece and you'll notice there's a four centimeter square and a one inch square. So you'll want to measure either of those squares to make sure that they measure either exactly four centimeters or exactly one inch. It shouldn't be slightly smaller or slightly larger, it needs to be exact. So once you've double checked your measurements, go ahead and cut to the outside of the thick black line and when you've done so your pattern piece should look like this. So you'll use the pattern piece as well as the list in the cutting instructions in the pattern to cut out all of your pieces from fabric and interfacing. So let me show you how to attach your fabric to the interfacing. So we'll start off with the lining main panel and the piece of shape flex. So the piece of shape flex that feels bumpy to your fingertips is the side with the adhesive and that's going to go against the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm gonna flip the fabric so it's face down I usually recommend using a pressing cloth for my videos. I don't use a pressing cloth just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I've got my iron set at the cotton setting. You can use a bit of steam if you prefer. And you just want to keep your iron moving over every area of the fabric for a few seconds. You don't want to just plonk your iron down and then keep moving it because you'll end up with iron shaped imprints on your fabric. So just keep that iron moving until you've hit all areas of the fabric. So once you've ironed everything for a few seconds, you wanna just do a check to make sure that the interfacing is properly adhered to the fabric. So to do that, you can just take your fingernail and try to peel back a corner of the fabric from the interfacing. As you can see, mine peeled away. So that just means I need to iron a little bit longer. Um, once you've ironed your entire piece, you'll repeat the same process with all of the pieces that require the shape flex interfacing. Okay, so now I'm going to pull out one of my exterior main panels and the foam interfacing. If you're using a foam that's fusible, you'll go ahead and fuse that to the wrong side of your fabric in the same manner as what we just did with the Shape Flex. I like using By Annie Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in interfacing. So I'm just going to lay my fabric on top of the foam and give it a quick press just to smooth everything out. And then I'm going to use some Wonder Clips to hold the edges of the fabric to the foam. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and machine baste the fabric to the foam an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And for machine basting, I like to lengthen my stitch length. So on my machine, I'm going to lengthen to four millimeters. So let's take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, now go ahead and take out the handle piece and flip so that the wrong side's facing up. Go ahead and grab the long edge so that both of the long edges meet and press. Okay, now go ahead and open the fabric back out. We're gonna bring the bottom long edge in toward the center crease and press. And then do the same thing with the top edge. Okay, refold everything along the creases and give it one more press. Okay, I'm just gonna place a couple wonder clips just to hold the edges. And we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and top stitch both of the long edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, now go ahead and pull out one exterior main panel and one lining main panel. We're going to be sewing them along the top edge, so if your exterior fabric is directional, you want to make sure to orient it so um, the top edge is at the top. Okay, so I'm going to flip so that the fabrics are right sides together. Before I put some wonder clips along the top edge, I'm going to use my fabric pen and mark a half inch in from either side. So we're going to start and stop sewing at that half inch marking. 
Okay, so wonder clips on the rest. If you had your stitch length increased for the top stitching of the handle, go ahead and turn it back to your regular stitch length. And on my machine, my regular stitch length is two and a half millimeters. So we're gonna be sewing this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're gonna start and stop at those half inch markings. Okay, now we're gonna press the fabrics wrong sides together. Before I do so, and this step is optional, I'm gonna trim back a little bit of the foam and exterior interfacing just to kind of reduce the bulk in the seam. So you can use regular scissors, but I've also got some duck build scissors here. The duck bill holds the other additional fabric away from uh, the scissors so you don't cut through it. So I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and basically eyeball that foam interfacing and cut it in half, but of course be sure not to cut into your stitching line. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my iron and press the fabrics so that they're wrong sides together. I'm gonna use some wonder clips just to hold the pressed edge till I can get it over to the sewing machine. And again, with the top stitching, we're gonna start and stop a half inch in from either end. So you may feel more comfortable grabbing your ruler and just marking that half inch again, just so that you don't accidentally sew all the way to the edge of the fabric. Okay, so for this top stitching, we're gonna top stitch using a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. So a scant quarter of an inch is just a hair less than your regular quarter of an inch. Okay, and I'm also going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters just because there's some extra thickness um, built in for this top stitching. And you'll repeat the same process for the remaining exterior main panel and the remaining lining main panel. Okay, now we're gonna make center markings on both the fabric and the zipper. So to center the zipper, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in half and make a marking with my pen on the center. And then on the fabric, I'm actually gonna use the pattern piece and just line it up along the side edge and mark the center using the pattern piece as well. Okay, now I'm gonna draw a line with my clover chaco, which is a white chalk, that is quarter of an inch down from the top edge of the fabric. And since my fabric is a little bit lighter, I'm actually gonna fill in with my friction pen. Normally I like to save my friction pen for areas of the fabric that you won't see in the finished project, but my, my fabric's got a lot of white, so I'm just gonna do a bit of filling in in the white areas. Okay, so I'm gonna use that quarter of an inch line, paying attention to the center markings for placing the zipper. So I'm going to settle up with the quarter markings first, and then the bottom edge of the lacy zipper will fall at that quarter of an inch marking. So if you feel more comfortable, you can use Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, which is quarter of an inch wide double-sided tape. If you're more comfortable, you can go ahead and use the Dritz tape to hold 
your zipper in place. Um, the only thing is that since you're using a lacy zipper, you'll need to use that water soluble feature of the tape after your project is finished, just to make sure that you don't see any of the adhesive in the finished project. So to activate the water soluble nature of the tape, again, this will be when the project is completely finished, but all you have to do is spritz a little bit of water wherever you see the adhesive and you can just rub it away with either a paper towel or your fingernail and that adhesive will dissolve. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the video. So again, lining up the center marking first and then placing the rest of the zipper in place. Okay, so we're gonna to top stitch this zipper down. You'll need to use a zipper foot and we're gonna be stitching a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the zipper teeth or edge of the zipper, whichever you prefer. And again, we're gonna start and stop at those half inch markings. Okay, if at all possible, you'll wanna match your top thread color to match your lace zipper so that the stitching blends in as much as possible. Okay, now we're gonna add that second main panel piece. So again, you'll need to draw that line that's a quarter of an inch down from the top edge and also a half inch in from each of the side edges. And again, I'm just gonna fill in with my friction wherever there's a, a white space just so I'm covered. Okay, so we're gonna attach the second long edge of the zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these around. And, oh, I forgot to make a center marking. So I'm just gonna really quickly pull out my pattern piece and mark that center marking. The center marking's um, important. I, I suppose you could line up the side edges as well, but I just feel really comfortable having that sec center marking there also to help me evenly distribute the fabric. So again, I'm gonna use the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, and if you prefer not to use the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, you can just go ahead and hold the zipper in place with your fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that down, and then I'm gonna overlap my zipper over the fabric, just as I did before, just so it hits that quarter of an inch line. Oops. Got a little excited with my uh, ripping off that <laughs> paper over there on the tape. There we go, okay. All right, so I'm gonna start with the center and then work my way outward. Okay, just as we did before, we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch that zipper tape down using that coordinating thread. Okay, and if you did use that Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape while the project is still flat, you may wanna just go ahead and take a spray bottle out, um, spray that water-soluble adhesive just to remove that so that you don't see it in the finished project. Okay, now go ahead and grab, we're gonna start with just the exterior fabrics. I'm gonna bring them right sides together, pushing the lining out of the way, and I'm gonna pin the bottom edge of the project in place. Okay, we're gonna be sewing the bottom edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna be sewing using my regular stitch length on my sewing machine, which is two and a half millimeters. Okay, and if you still have your zipper foot on your machine, you can go ahead and swap that out for your regular foot as well. Okay. 
Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with the lining. So go ahead and pin the lining in place. And we're also gonna leave an opening centered at the bottom about six inches. So I usually like to make myself some markings with my pen just so I don't forget to leave the opening. So basically we'll be sewing from this end to the first marking, back stitch, and then we'll be sewing from that second marking to the opposite end. And again, this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, you want to press those seams open on the end of your ironing board. So here's the exterior seam and then the same thing with both halves of the lining. And again, there's the opening in your lining. And now we're going to add the handle piece. So we're going to be adding the handle on the end of the zipper where the zipper head will be when the zipper is closed. Um, but of course, we need to make sure that zipper head is in the opening. So go ahead and unzip the zipper about halfway toward the middle of the finished pouch. Okay, so we're gonna be placing the handle in this area over here, this cutout area. And one piece of the handle will go in each half of the finished pouch. So to do that, we want the handle to be centered along this area over here. So you may find it helpful to finger press the center of this cutout area on both halves. And when you place the handle on the inside of this cutout area, you want to make sure that the handle is not twisted. So I'm going to start on this end, centering the handle, raw edges aligned, and then I'm just going to use a wonder clip to hold that in place. And same thing on the opposite end. So again, there's that center marking. And let me just show you, this is what it looks like on the inside. So again, here's the cutout, and this is where we'll be stitching the handle in place. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch both ends of the handle down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're gonna start sewing on it this end. We're gonna sew the exterior first and then the lining. I'm gonna bring the short ends right on top of each other. Again, the zipper will be in the middle. And I'm going to wonder clip it so that the raw edges are aligned. Again, you wanna make sure that your lining fabric is pushed out of the way. We won't be sewing over the lining at all. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch across this end exterior fabrics and interfacings only using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now you can go ahead and trim the excess zipper and we're gonna be stitching the same end but the lining fabrics now. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring the linings directly on top of each other, and this time we are gonna be sewing through the exterior fabric as well. So I'm gonna place some wonder clips. Before I place wonder clips on both of the opposing ends, I'm gonna take my ruler and mark a half inch in from either end. So we're gonna start and stop sewing at that half inch marking. Um, and again, this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we sewed the lining starting and stopping a half inch away from either end. We're gonna finish off this area only sewing through the lining fabric. So I'm gonna take this back over to the sewing machine Again, only sewing through the lining fabrics. We're gonna sew from the marking toward the end of the fabric and same thing on this side as well. And that will finish off the lining while still keeping it separate from the exterior.
Okay, now we're going to finish off these ends over here, which will create the box shape of the pouch. So we're going to start with the lining. I'm going to start with this one seam, and I'm going to pinch the fabric so that that seam is centered over this edge of the fabric, and you don't want your fabrics to be sort of a bow shaped. You want it to be a straight edge so that when you sew the boxed portion, it looks really nice and boxy. All right, so I'm gonna place some wonder clips on the end and we'll pin both of the lining portions so that we can sew both of those at the same time. So again, we're just gonna pinch this end so that the seam is centered on, on one, one side. And both of these pinned edges are going to be sewn using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So when you get it over to the machine, just pull the fabrics taut so that you're sewing a nice straight edge. Okay, we're gonna be repeating that same process for the exterior. So again, pinch the fabrics so that the seam is centered. And especially if you're using a sew-in foam, you wanna take your fingers and smooth out those areas so that you don't sew over a pucker. So what I'm doing with my finger, I'm smoothing this area in where the sort of the cutout starts. And what I'm gonna do is smooth it out over here and just place a wonder clip down here just to make sure that that area stays nice and smooth for when I get it over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now I'm gonna pinch that seam and use Wonder Clips to hold the edges of the fabric. So I'm gonna pinch the other opposing exterior seam as well, so we can take care of both of these at the same time. And again, you wanna make sure that your lining fabric is pushed out of the way. All right, so first I'm going to concentrate on that area where the cutout is, make sure it's nice and smooth. And then finally pinch that edge so it's a straight edge and use some wonder clips to hold it in place. All right, so we're going to be sewing these two edges as well using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we're going to be repeating that same process on the opposite end of the pouch. Uh, the opposite end is a little bit different just because of the fact that the zipper needs to be unzipped so that we can turn it right side out. So we're going to be sewing the exterior first. Again, make sure that your lining is pushed back and out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on the exterior. I'll start at this corner first. And then I'll line up the opposing corner and then just make sure that the zipper teeth are kind of butted up against each other in the middle. Okay, so pushing that lining out of the way, we're going to be sewing from one end to the other of the exterior using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to sew that end of the lining. So I'm going to place these two lining pieces directly on top of each other, stacking it 
on top of the exterior so there's my foam underneath and just as we did before we're going to start and stop a half inch away from either end so I'm going to go ahead and mark that right now using my marking pen and ruler okay and we're going to be sewing this just between the two markings using a quarter of an inch seam allowance Okay, go ahead and trim the zipper excess. Obviously our zipper head is in toward the center of the pouch because we unzipped it halfway. And just as before, we're gonna finish off the ends of the lining. So push your exterior out of the way and we're gonna just stitch from the marking toward the end of the fabric and then the same thing over here. Okay, now we're going to close up these ends, lining first and then exterior, just as we did before. So it's the same exact thing. Again, we're going to pinch the fabric with the seam centered, and then I'm going to have some wonder clips holding the edges. Okay, same thing on the opposite side of the lining. And we're going to be stitching the lining in place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I know there's a lot of uh, bulky stuff getting in the way here, but we're almost done, so just hang tight. And anyway, your lining doesn't have to be sewn perfectly. We just basically need to close up that edge. So. Don't stress about it being perfect. I know there's a lot of uh, that exterior is kind of starting to get in the way. Okay, so now we just need to close up those openings of the exterior and just remember that handle piece is over there. So it makes it easier to center the seam of the exterior because you have the handle and you know the middle of the handle is the center. So we'll start off by pinning that seam centered over the handle. And again, you wanna make sure that the area surrounding the cutout is smoothed out first. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a wonder clip a little bit lower down because I just smoothed it out with my finger. And then same thing on the opposite end. Okay, and let's take care of the other exterior opening as well. And then again, make sure you smooth out that corner so it looks really nice when the pouch is finished. Okay, so we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and stitch those two edges down using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to pull everything right side out through the opening in the lining and if you need to unzip the zipper all the way to do that go ahead and feel free okay so we're going to pull everything right side out and we'll need to close the opening in the lining so to do that uh, before i do that let's poke out the corners first though so we have easy access so you'll have four corners on either end of the pouch so you can just use your fingers to push those corners out first. 
We'll do some pressing after we close the opening and the lining, but I just find it easier to poke out the corners when you have easy access to still stick your hand inside. Okay, so there's that opening in the lining. I'm just gonna use my fingers to turn toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and use a wonder clip to hold the edges. So there's two ways that you can close this opening. The first is by machine, so you can just top stitch the opening closed using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or if you prefer a finish where you don't see a seam there, you can slip stitch the opening closed by hand. And I have a free video on my YouTube channel on how to slip stitch an opening closed if you'd like to check that out. Uh, but for this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and machine stitch that closed using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, the pressing for a box pouch is super important because the pressing is what really gives it its boxy shape. So let me show you quickly how to do the pressing, starting off with the, the bottom. So I, as you can see, the two bottom corners are pointy. I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch those corners and kind of walk my fingers along that bottom edge and then go ahead and bring out your iron and then just give that bottom edge a press. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, pinching the bottom corners. Walk your fingers to kind of finger press a straight line. And then take your iron and give that bottom edge a press. Okay, we'll do the same thing with the top as well. So here's the top edge, two corners. Pinch with your fingers. Walk your hands out and kind of make a finger press before you get to the iron. And we'll do the same thing with the other top edge. Okay, so we pressed the top and bottom. As you can see, it's a, a nice straight shape and we'll also need to address the sides. So because there are seams on the sides, sides are a little bit easier to press. So I'm just rolling the seam out with my fingers. And we also need to address, let me go ahead and zip this close. Also need to address the top and the bottom. So there's no seams there, but again, you can take your fingers, pinch the, the short ends, the corners, and then give that a press. And then same thing with this top corner as well. Pinch those two corners and then finger press and then go ahead and give it a press. And we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side as well. That handles kind of a little bit in our way. So if you feel more comfortable just finger pressing, but give it a really good finger press. Cause like I said, there's nothing more disappointing than making a box pouch and it doesn't look like a box. So the box feature is super important here. Okay, and if you have any just cosmetic wrinkles on the front or sides, you can go ahead and hit that with the iron, but otherwise your pouch is finished. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished project. Be sure to post a photo of your finished box pouch in my Facebook group. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.